What is going on guys? We are back playing some more Surviving with Mechanism version 10. And today guys, we're going to be setting up biofuel production and then using that biofuel to generate power. Now producing biofuel is actually very easy to do. You only need one machine and it's one we've already worked with and that's the crusher, a very simple machine, one that only requires that you input a plant-based substance. And I say that very loosely considering there's about 80 different things from vanilla Minecraft you can put in that are considered plant-based substances and you are going to get out a varying amount of biofuel depending on what you put in. Pretty much you're going to average between four and five biofuel. Some things are a little bit lower, some are a little bit higher, but on average it's about four to five when you put something in and then you can take that biofuel and you can either put it into the bio generator right away and you'll get some power out or you can process it a little bit more by putting in a couple other things into a few more processing steps and we will get ethylene and then that ethylene can go into a gas burning generator and get you almost double the power that you would be getting for the same amount of biofuel that you would be using to make it. So we'll be going over that in a future episode. We're not going to go over that today because like I said, there are a couple more processing steps that are required that you do to make the ethylene. And that means that there's a couple more machines that you need to set up. And so this is a very early game setup we're going to be going over today since it requires so little. The next step is going to be a little bit more mid game because you are going to require a couple more things that need to be upgraded a lot so that they can match the speed of whatever farm you're using. And that's an important thing that we're going to be touching on now, which is that you need to have a farming setup that's going to pretty much determine the speed at which you're generating power. The amount of plant based substance you are getting is going to be the amount of biofuel you're getting and then the amount of power. So you need a good farm. And unfortunately, Mechanism does not offer automated farming. I do not know why. I'd seen comments in the past that they might get something for it, but those were back in like 2015. And here we are still with nothing to do automated farming with. And so we are going to have to go to the primitive ways of vanilla farming, which really isn't all that bad if you think about it. I enjoy setting up vanilla farms, but if you are playing in a mod pack, chances are you're gonna have some way to do automated farming, and you're probably better off doing that than attempting to set up a more efficient vanilla farm, which will probably take more room in most cases and still not be as easy to work with. But if you wanna follow along today, the farm we're gonna be setting up is going to be a melon farm, the reason being you get per melon slice for biofuel, which is equivalent to most of the other things you're gonna be putting in there. An example would be a full pumpkin is gonna get you five biofuel. So why not go with the melon slice getting you four instead of the pumpkin, which is gonna get you five, since it's really not that big a difference and you'll get way more melon slices per melon block that is broken. So the melon farm today that we're going with, and I believe I'm just gonna say this, that melons are agreed upon to be the most efficient for this in terms of like space that you're using. But the melon farm that we're going to be going with today, I will link the video in the description that I'm using. It is not my design. It is a phenomenal one, though, and it is going to net you, I think, over a thousand melon slices an hour, which is great because that's going to get us a ton of power. And that's exactly what we want. So thankfully, there really is not much crafting to do today. I know, very strange for our Surviving With episodes. Usually, we spend a ton of time crafting, but thankfully today, we should be able to breeze right through it. So all the stuff down here at the bottom is what we'll need for setting up the vanilla farm. Nothing too complicated. And then up here at the top is all the stuff we need for crafting the mechanism machines. And that is going to be right here. We'll grab this out. This will be for doing the crusher, the bio generator. And then over here will be for making a basic bin, which we're going to be replacing the double chest that they use in the video for the farm with. And that's going to allow us to auto output the melons to our setup whenever we're ready for it. So it simplifies it a little bit when it comes to automating the second half of the biofuel production. Then we can grab out the basic logistical transporters that we're going to be using for moving the items from the bin. And then, like I said, all the stuff here, and hopefully we have enough inventory space. Yeah, we will for all the stuff needed for making the farm itself. So for doing the crafting, we can make the bio generator very simple to do very cheap. Then we can make the crusher again for the second time in the series. Also very cheap. It does require lava buckets, which is kind of annoying to go and get. Um, I don't really know why it requires those, but super cheap to make. And then lastly, we are going to make the bin and it's just going to be the basic bin. There's a lot of different options here. So we want the basic bin, which as you can see stores 4,096 items. If we ever get up to that many melons, uh, yeah, I'm fine just dumping the rest of them. So now we should pretty much have everything we need 
And this is also some good news, maybe some bad news for some of you because you probably thought the base was going to be completely done. In all fairness, I also thought the base was going to be completely done this episode, but it turns out there was a significant amount of terraforming that needed to be done uh, to actually get the ground to be level, as you can see. And so that took a really long time and going out and actually getting the dirt for it because I didn't even have enough. Then setting this all up wasn't too bad, but then putting in the floor with these smooth stone slabs, which... I think they look very nice, but then you have to place down twice as many blocks and it requires a significant amount of actual stone. So now that this is done, it took longer than I thought. So we don't have a roof today. It's not completely finished. Um, but for now we have somewhere to start working with that is not totally homeless and outside. And by next episode, hopefully we'll have the roof and I'll start moving stuff in. But this will be the first thing that we set up in the base today. And I believe we're going to set it up over here in this corner because the farm itself is going to take up a bulk of the amount of the space and it should be nine by 10. So we'll put it right in this corner since we really don't need to interact with any other portion of it. Now we probably want to get out or we'll get out our pick and our shovel. And then I'm just going to move all of this stuff away so that we can just have out the stuff that we're going to really need for setting up the farm when we eventually need it. But the first thing we're going to do is clear out the space, which is going to be a nine by 10. And you can pretty much determine, you know, where you want to um, put it based on knowing that the nine by nine area is going to have the farm and you are going to have an additional strip that you pretty much do not use. So the nine by 10, that last additional strip of blocks is not going to be used. And so we're going to keep that on this end over here because we can cover it up and make the farm really only look nine by nine. And you'll understand what I'm saying once we actually get into this. So we'll do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And that's great. It actually, I should have realized that it lines up perfectly with the design on the wall. And then we can come out three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then 10. And we're going to clear this out right here. Unfortunately, I am going to be breaking the glowstone. So uh, I will have to recraft that. But thankfully, I think we should easily be able to. Uh, it took me a while to get all the glowstone dust too to set this up um, to light the base properly without a roof. It shouldn't be too bad once we actually have a roof to get the appropriate lighting and make it look nice. But for now, since we don't have a roof, unless we want monsters spawning in here and killing us, uh, we got to go with the glowstone. And I actually was already killed by a creeper while I was prepping for this episode. So we lost a fair bit of experience, but do not worry. Uh, I did not get it on camera. So you guys don't get to laugh at me for it uh, because it was really bad. It, it was pretty bad the way I died. Um, but yeah, so we'll clear this out and then we're gonna have to dig down one more because we want it to be too deep. And that is where the minecart is gonna be going. And this is actually a setup that I had never seen before. Um, I was stuck back in the ways of like 1.7 automated farms, but I thought I would look this up so that we weren't really, really primitive when it came to doing uh, vanilla stuff. Obviously, I'm not very much of a vanilla guy, so I don't really know all the fancy little nuances that come along, especially with the newer versions, but apparently people do. So it's be better to go with their stuff than mine, honestly. Stick with my stuff for modded Minecraft, but do not trust me with vanilla Minecraft. So, so once this is cleared out, we are going to be putting the chest area down. And now we're gonna put it down right over here and we'll clear out a nice little area over here to work with because we're gonna be putting down the hoppers right here. And then we are going to be putting down uh, the basic bin right here. And so we can do, huh, we wanna dig down one more right here, put down the bin and dig both of these. And I'm gonna use two hoppers and we'll go like that pushing into the bin and then like that. And these should easily put items right in the bin when they go in there. And if you look at the front of the bin, you'll be able to see when an item actually goes in there and is picked. And the reason that we have, if you saw the configurator in our inventory is because this is going to allow us to change whether this is automated for output or not. And we want it to be auto eject because it's gonna make it so that we can easily uh, just have things go right from here up here to where presumably we will have today the bio generator and then eventually the ethylene setup. So now we need to grab out all the rails that we're gonna be working with, some redstone torches, and where are the rest of the, the regular rails? And we are going to go right here in the middle. So one, two, three, four, five. And we are going to dig down 
two blocks all the way across and go just like this. And then we are going to put down the redstone torches all across the bottom there. And then we're going to cover them back up with some dirt. And I did get, I believe we got this one over here, right? Yeah, we did. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. So then we cover those all up with dirt and then we can come back over and that's where the powered rails are going to go. And you're just going to put them along the middle in a strip of three, but we can put down these because I forget with, with the rails, you got to orient them properly. And these are going to be going across uh, the hoppers right here. And then we're going to do a very interesting zigzag back and forth. And you're going to do powered rails and then over. And I should have realized that we should break these and that's going to go into our setup now. Okay. Uh, and then we get the powered rails and bring it back over and we're just going to go all the way around and do this. And this is the exact reason that you run into the weird, instead of it being nine by nine, you do the nine by 10 and it's because you need to appropriately connect all of this and then bring it back to the start. And there really aren't um, that many amazing ways to cover the entire distance uh, and also loop it all the way back. Uh, so you'd have to fiddle with that a little bit if you wanted to adjust the amount you had. And so now we are going to, presumably it went in here. Let's see if I remember how to pull stuff out of here. So we'll left click and get it out. I think you need to left click with an empty fist though, which was always interesting. And then we're going to put down powered rails again. And I believe over here now we need to power them. Now the reason I wait to put down this is because you the powered rails, there is no middle here. There's no exact middle because you have 10 blocks. So you can put it down on either of these. Uh, we'll dig down right here like we did. Put down the redstone torch, put down dirt, and put down a powered rail. So there we go. Now what we can do is take the minecart with a hopper. And if we were to place this down and push it, it should be able to run through this entire area. And I'm going to put dirt right here so we can get up, but it should be able to run through this entire area. And this is what's going to do all the picking up of the items that drop. So this is going to be underground and now we can cover it back up with dirt and we'll be able to set up our farm here. So we'll cover all this back up and let that just continue going. Obviously it's going to be perpetually going, which is exactly what we want. And I actually did not know that they could pick stuff up through the ground. So that was that was something I learned. I basically never really use uh, the hopper minecarts, but you know, the more you know about vanilla Minecraft stuff, turns out it can actually be useful. Go figure, guys. Uh, I <laughs> I will pretty much never go with vanilla Minecraft stuff if there's a modded version of it, but it's always good to know those things. Okay, so now right over here actually. We can pretty much take this, and I'm forgetting right now, we can break all of these, and these will get collected and brought back over, um, but we can actually put down these smooth stone slabs over here. Reason being, we're not going to be doing any farming there, because uh, we are just going to do the farming in the 9x9 area, and then this will be right there. So that'll help us just to orient things a little bit better, since now we're actually working in a proper square. And then over here, we can just grab these out we actually click on the front face there we go left click on it okay so first things first we need to come up here and get right in the middle which should be right here and this is where we're going to put down a slab oops we don't want to put it down on the top put a slab down and then we are going to put uh some water so right in the center four from each side we'll put down the water and then on top of that we are going to put down our glowstone so this actually matches up perfectly with where it was on the floor, funny enough. Uh, and then we'll have to make some more glowstone right over here just to repair this. Little, little mishap that happened right there. So it matches. But now we have the water that we need. We got the light that we need for this. And we can pull out the fresh hoe that we made for tilling the soil. And so we'll just go from this corner. And we are going to make a checkerboard pattern. And so we'll do this all the way around and there we go get it right here just make sure we didn't miss any oh there we did we missed one right there but I think everything else is good so there we go we have 
our checkerboard pattern. Those should all stay hydrated from the water in the center. And now we can go around and plant our melon seeds in these. And so we'll do one in each. Apparently we had not placed anything yet, um, but now, you know, guys, we're farmers now. So, oh yeah, that's really an accomplishment. When you're playing modded Minecraft to do vanilla farming, not automate it is, uh, I can't remember the last time I did that. Okay, so now we have all these placed down, so that's good to go. The next thing is going to be making a false ceiling on this so that we can place down the pistons and then the observers after. So the pistons need to be uh, one block up, so they'll be placed down right here. So we want the false ceiling to pretty much be going right along here. And we can break these torches just so that we can put down the appropriate amount of dirt. And then we'll grab the rest of the dirt out. I have plenty of blocks to work with. So we'll put this in. And this is honestly the most annoying part of this coming up is going to be putting down the pistons so that they are appropriately facing down. We might be able to rotate them. Uh, I, I don't know if you can rotate them always with different wrenches from different mods in modded Minecraft. But you can also just appropriately place them down from the start. So we'll grab out all the pistons. And we'll come right on over. And we want them to go now uh, inverted from where the farmland is. So we'll put them down every other one. See, and I didn't even do it right the first time. You got to get super close. Apparently, I'm not even close enough yet. Let's see if I can do it once. There we go. So we'll just put them down every other one. And then we'll come up and we'll do it here. So again, every other one. And so this is really the slow part. Um, now one thing I do want to say is if you guys have heard it in the video, you may have, you may have not. Um, if you heard a noise in the background that is most likely my youngest cat, her name is Pebbles, um, and she is a rescue cat that we got, and she has not been spayed yet, but while we were on vacation, she went into heat. And so we have a, an appointment for her to get spayed, uh, very soon, but unfortunately with everything going on in the world, even vets have to take precautions and are not able to schedule as many appointments. So if you hear her in the background, uh, I don't think you will, but that's her being a little bit loud because she is currently in heat. So just a heads up because there's not a ton that I can do about that, unfortunately. Um, but I did want to get a video out to you guys today because it's been a week pretty much since the last one because of me going on a small vacation. The first one I've actually taken in a year, a little bit over a year. Um, so it was pretty exciting, but I wanted to get back. So as dumb as it sounds, so I could record some videos. Um, <laughs> okay, so now we're almost done here. We're at the end and we don't want to mess up placing them down now. There we go. And there. So now we have all the pistons placed down and we'll build our way up here because we can actually get rid of the roof now. So we can put these down, or we can break these, and then we'll put down the observers after, and it'll go, again, inverted from where the pistons are in the 9x9, nine nine. so they'll be in all the open spaces here, and that's what's going to fire off the pistons. We'll have to use some redstone too, but that's what's going to fire off the pistons when the melons eventually grow, and that's what's going to break them and allow us to pick up all the melon slices. So not too complicated, honestly. And again, this should net us over a thousand melons on average every hour, which is great. So we'll get out the observers and now we are just going to place them down and make sure they are actually, yep, see I messed it up there. Let's see if I can pick this one up. There we go. Um, make sure they are actually facing in the proper direction again. A lot of this is just dealing with the obnoxious orienting of the uh, different blocks and making it take a really long time because of that and unfortunately oh my gosh okay so that one is down there which is a problem um see that's why we really don't want to mess this up because now i have to hop down oh right it got picked up whoo you know what that's a great thing about this setup because i didn't want to break the farmland to go down there uh so we'll just have to go and grab the last one from over in our storage setup uh, and you don't really need one there. We can put one down here. It's not going to do anything. Um, but for the sake of symmetry, we can put that down. 
Okay, so there we go. And, ooh, you know what? Actually, I guess we really do not want this one here. So we'll make sure we have enough. So this one will go right here. And then we'll have to hop down here and grab out... Well, there's a bunch of stuff in there that we're getting out now. Dirt and the observer. There we go. Okay, so this last observer goes right here. And now, whenever these update, these should fire off the pistons. Uh, actually, there's one last thing we gotta do. I'm forgetting. We need to put down redstone, I believe, on top of the observers. So we'll go through and click down a block of redstone, or a piece of redstone. Whoops. And you can see right there, I guess one updated. And so it fired off the pistons around it to break whatever melon may have grown. Now, obviously, they are going to fire right now when they grow. And a melon is not going to be growing because they are not fully matured yet. Um, but they will be. If you want to go around and bone meal them, you can. But you can see that they're starting to grow. Uh, and I wonder if it's nighttime and we could sleep right now. So it stops raining inside. Um... Well, it's not going to, but something we're also going to want to do, and I will do this off camera, is you're going to want to put down blocks directly around this. And the reason being, even if it's not dirt, A, if it's dirt around it, you could have melons grow on the blocks that are not covered by the pistons. If you also run into the problem that when blocks on the outside are broken, when these melons are broken, sometimes the melon slices will land technically on this block, and then they will not get picked up by the minecart down there. And that's really not what you want because then you're gonna be losing out on a decent chunk of the uh, slices that you should be getting. But pretty much this farm is done other than the visual aspect of it. And so the last thing that we need to do is get the items from the farm up to the bio generator and the crusher. And so that's gonna be using the basic logistical transporters and then also using the configurator. And so we are going to pull these out from the bottom and bring them up this side right over here. And because we want to put stuff around this farm, that's going to be going right here. So we are going to pretty much cover this up so we know not to work there. Uh, we are going to pull them out like such and go under this. And so if you look at this, if we hold down shift and right click, you can see it goes from being sort of a gray green to a light green. And this means it is on auto eject. And now we are able to connect it like so and bring it up. And if we put the crusher right there with an input on the bottom, we should be all set. So we'll cover this up and we can even cover that up and we'll get out our two machines. So there we go. We have the crusher right here. We'll put that down. We'll change the side configuration, and we're also going to have to power these, by the way, but for this one, with one next to the other, it'll actually be able to power itself after it runs for one time. So we'll make sure that the input is on the bottom, which is what we want, and we want the output to be on the left side. So we'll do that, and then we'll put down the bio generator over here, and oop, so we actually need to make sure that the output for this is on the appropriate side because it looks like it's going to be on the back. So we may actually want to adjust this. I don't know if we can appropriately have it output. I don't think we can have it output to the side there. You know what? And we should probably move this anyway. Forward one. Can we use, we should be able to use the configurator to rotate this, right? Can you not use that to rotate it? Wow. Okay, well, we'll put this out one like that, and then we'll actually move the crusher out one and put it right here. We'll rotate it so it's facing the way it was before. So all the sides are appropriate, and we're actually going to go down, and we'll break these. Can we not? There's There used to be a way that you could, like, break these automatically, but I'm probably forgetting it right now. Um, I thought there was at least. But we can come down here and collect these and just move it so that it's right here, coming in the bottom. Because we do not want to have to worry about the power to get to other machines. So if we run the power along the back, that should be fine. And then right here, we can just disconnect that and make sure that again, because I misclicked it, is on auto output. So there we go. Now it should be functioning. So the crusher 
the outputs are still good, auto eject is turned on, and the bio generator is over here. So really the only other thing we need to do is once these fully grow would be to give it a quick jump start to get it working. Uh, and so if we were to come out here, we could use, if we have it in one of these chests over here, we have the heat generator. So this is a really easy way to give it a jump start. And we've got the basic universal cables so that we can run those along the back. But yeah, this will allow us to give it a quick, uh, quick boot up and then it'll be able to start running obviously once we have stuff in it. So if we put the universal cables along the back there and uh, so this is the front and that's the back, you can put it that it's just, well, actually it doesn't need to be anything on the back. That's right. Cause the energy is for that, but we're not inputting the energy the way it's talking about. And then the heat generator, if I could place it down in the appropriate fashion, uh, we will be able to throw some coal in there and that should be able to get us uh, enough power in the crusher so that it's able to run once and get us some biofuel which will then power itself so the heat generator now that it's off can be broken and now the setup is actually good to go unfortunately we don't have any melons growing in here but this is the setup uh, you can see that everything's functioning properly when these do update they just need to grow a little bit more if you wanted to speed up the process you could obviously take some bone meal to them but i have not killed nearly enough skeletons to have bone meal to be able to do that so i'm just going to allow it to grow but i think that's going to be it for today guys hopefully you enjoyed today's episode if you have any questions feel free to post them in the comments remember you can find the video link to the original design for this in the description too Thanks for watching, guys, and I will talk to you later. Standing in a glass bowl at the end of a black coal, coal lost and upside down. Faces rolling past me, all my memories rolling past me.